you'd be surprised how much an animal goes through once it's dead. First up guys, apologize for the change of scenery in case it throws you off, uh, having some work done at the moment, uh, but let's get into how much a fossil actually goes through once it's dead. So it sounds like I'm stating the obvious, but a fossil spends a lot more time as a fossil than it did, you know, alive. Now it takes approximately 30,000 years for the whole fossilization process to fully complete. And in that time, you can see a lot of shit. Now everything that an organism goes through after it's died is known as taphonomy. And knowing everything about the taphonomical process is majorly, majorly important for finding out as much as we can about the organism and about the environment that it was actually living in. So make sure you stick around until the end of the video to find out everything that we can find out from taphonomy. So let's go through chronologically the whole taphonomical process. Step one, die. First, the organism has to die, obviously. Now what happens to an organism after death but before burial is known as biostratinomy. Now sometimes you can get a fossil that saw no biostratinomy whatsoever, normally in the cases where the burial was actually the cause of death, and this is known as an abrusion deposit. An example of this is the famous fighting dinosaurs, where a Velociraptor and Protoceratops were found to have been buried by a collapsing sand dune mid-fight. Deposits like this though are exceedingly rare, and most of the time a fossil would have gone through the following. First thing the remains have to contend with is articulation. The mineralized hard parts of an organism, such as a carapace or a skeleton, are often held together by soft parts. Now if these soft parts are eaten by other animals or decay away, the hard parts have a much tougher time staying together or articulated. This is why you are a lot more likely to see an intact ammonite shell than an articulated apatosaurus. Now if disarticulation has occurred, then the next best thing that a paleontologist can hope for is that what is left of the remains stay associated with each other. Again though, this doesn't happen often. Events will often spread out the remains so that no one knows what belongs to what, such as floods, storms, or scavengers running off with little bits, you name it. Now, if the remains have been dispersed in some way, then it's likely that the process that actually deposited it would have picked up some other bits along the way. This is the accumulation stage. Now, once everything has settled and buried, process of fossilization can begin, or at least it can begin on what's left of the organism. The process of fossilization is essentially when minerals permeate into the organic material and replace it one cell at a time, which is why it takes around 30,000 years. Now the final stage, even though it occurs at all other stages more often than not, is known as mechanical alteration. In other words, this is something that physically alters the remains, such as warping or compaction. So at this point, you may have already guessed that the taphonomy of a fossil can tell us a hell of a lot about the environment that it was actually in. If an organism is well-preserved, articulated, and associated with other well-preserved fossils, there's only a limited number of reasons for this. If relatively little decay and disarticulation has occurred, it normally means a rapid burial took place. If formed as part of a death assemblage, it could tell us that the animal lived in groups, depending on other clues available. Even the mode of fossilization itself can tell us quite a lot. For example, many fossils can be made from pyrite, aka fool's gold. Now this can only happen when something has fossilized in sediment with a high iron content and little to no oxygen. And then there is after the fossilization has occurred. Now with earth changing as much as it does, it stands to reason that it will change a lot of the fossils that it has within it. So 
looking at those fossils can give us a lot of clues into what those processes might actually be. For example, fossils have actually helped immensely in proving the hypothesis of tectonic movement. Now, since fossils from a particular species were found in completely separate places without any means of traveling that far, it can only mean that these species died near each other but were transported away and separated after burial. Now with regards to tectonic movement, how it all works and the relevance to fossils and how it affects life overall, I will be going into a video on that, so keep an eye out for it. Maybe subscribe so you don't miss it. Even in cases where there is exceptional preservation, such as various Lagerstadt, which I do explain about here, a fossil will always go through changes that makes it look very different to how it did in life. So understanding the taphonomical processes is massively important to understanding how the organism actually was in life. Now if you did enjoy the video and thought you learned something new, feel free to leave a like, chuck any comments or questions that you've got in the comment section, and also please consider subscribing as I would massively, massively appreciate it. Until next time.